testing and comparison with En-ROSE. I'm gonna show you the results from testing various scenarios from En-ROADS against other scientific models, how we're similar and how we're different. Now, this is a more advanced technical video. If you're a facilitator of En-ROADS workshops and games, you don't need to need to watch this video, but if you're really curious about how do we build these things, how do we test and build confidence in models like En-ROADS? If you're curious about system dynamics or just generally climate model science, definitely keep watching. All right, we're gonna focus on how we test En-ROADS against disaggregated models, such as integrated assessment models. Integrated assessment models are a whole class of models that connect society and the economy over with the biosphere, biogeochemical systems, and with the atmosphere and climate and that connection between these two areas. When I say that they're disaggregated, that means they take something like the world's uh, areas and countries and break them into small groups. And for example, GCAM, a prominent US-based integrated assessment model has 32 geopolitical regions. I'm looking at my notes here, 384 subregions. They take coal and they break coal into many types of coal and solar into different types of solar. In order to run as fast as we do and to work the way that we model things, we aggregate them into one geopolitical area, the world, and one type of coal and one kind of solar. And that's what we mean by the difference between disaggregated and aggregated. So what I just described is on this diagram here where complex disaggregated models, most large integrated assessment models, large scale integrated assessment models are in this box up here. You can see high on the y-axis, high in scope and detail. However, they're low in speed, simplicity of use and transparency. We, and with En-ROADS, belong in a class of models called simple climate models. There are others like FAIR and DICE, and they are really high on speed, simplicity, and transparency, but really low on scope and detail. They're highly aggregated. We test against them in order to build our confidence. When we notice that they're diff our results are very different than their results, that's a spark to say, hey, is there a way to improve En-ROADS? The arrow going back is that people, you, people, policymakers often use our models and run it fast many times before designing a single run in one of the slower disaggregated models. All right, let's go look at some of the results. We chose results from three integrated assessment models that were convened by the network for greening financial system. They made a whole range of scenarios. You can see some of them over on the right. We're particularly gonna focus on the one in the bottom right, current policies, but also the one that tracks and follows the NDCs and another that follows net zero 2050. Let's look at some of their results for greenhouse gas emissions from 2000 out to 2100. This shows the three different scenarios. The green line is from GCAM, a model out of PNNL here in the United States. You can see it, the green dots and the green line. Remind Magpie out of Potsdam Peak in Germany. And then Message Globium in Brown. Those are the results when the modelers and that team were asked to create a scenario to capture current policies without much uh, improvement of those policies or strengthening over time. Now I'm going to show you the result for the En-ROADS baseline. It is the blue line. So without it and then boom, there's the En-ROADS baseline. You can see that we're slightly higher throughout much of the century than most of the other three. And we'll explain why. 
When we look now at the different components of greenhouse gas net emissions, we're going to see that the difference between the En-ROADS baseline and the NGFS convened current policies scenario, the difference between the two is really no more different than, more greater than the differences among the three integrated assessment model results themselves. Let's go look at some. First, CO2 net emissions. Here are the results were slightly higher with the En-ROADS baseline, but the others differ from each other as well. Nitrous oxide emissions, here are the result of, a, of En-ROADS in the middle of the pack, slightly higher at the end of the century. CH4 is methane emissions. Here are the results for the comparison of En-ROADS against others. Now, when we look at energy sources, we're able to also draw from the International Energy Agency's World Energy Outlook, steps scenario, stated policies. And you can see now the, per, the orange line, this is a true forecast. They think that this is the forecast with stated policies going down this trend to 2050. So going lower than our blue line, but you can see how we're within say the fan, within the range of the others. Now with oil, the blue line is En-ROADS compared to the others. Now natural gas, En-ROADS compared to the others. Solar, solar energy, we can see how uh, En-ROADS baseline is in the middle of the pack and similar with wind slightly lower than some, higher in this case than message globium. When we simulate our future and compare it for nuclear energy, we're able to compare against the forecast from the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA. Their low scenario is the green, the light green line, and their high scenario is in purple. These, of course, are scenarios that if you subsidize in uh, nuclear, in En-ROADS, you can recreate some of these to see what the impact would be. But we are definitely lower in our baseline. Bioenergy, here in the middle of a pack, but lower than IEA. And this is transport electric energy consumption, which gives an indication of uh, electrification of transport. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of testing against these scenarios and particularly in other scenarios than the current policies. So I'm going to first show you a little bit more of breaking down the current policies and showing you the specific ones. Here you can see Remind Magpie and see that it's pointing to the uh, triangle symbol. So all the triangles are Remind Magpie, GCAM are all the circles, and Message Globium are all the diamonds. You already saw this result. This is the En-ROADS version of the, of the NGFS scenario. No, you didn't see this exact one. This is a, is a recreation of as close as we could get to the NGFS current policies. What we're doing is we're changing inputs into En-ROADS to match as closely as we could what we understand to be the inputs into the NGFS current policies scenario. And it gets more relevant as we recreate En-ROADS for uh, the other, what we call reduction scenarios, scenarios in which emissions are reduced. There are two such scenarios, emissions reduction scenarios, the NDCs, that is, if the world follows the pledges, the nationally determined contributions, NDCs, to the Paris Agreement, that'll be one scenario. And then the other scenario, net zero 2050, 1.5, this other one. Here are those results for the NGFS scenarios. The orange ones following the NDCs is a gentle decrease in overall greenhouse gas emissions. The NGFS net zero shows a steeper drop. You can see how steeply it falls 
Um, again, where Remind Magpie is the diamond, Message Globium is the, excuse me, is the triangle. This is the diamond and GCAM is the circle. Now what we'll do is show you the results where we as closely as possible replicated the inputs into their models. We replicated into En-ROADS. That is changing things like what the carbon price is in the future, how much energy efficiency, how much cuts to deforestation, cuts to methane, et cetera. Here are those results, and we can see how close or far away we are to those other results. This doesn't validate En-ROADS. This is part of a whole suite of confidence building tests that we do that helps us improve the model, builds our confidence that the model is appropriate to its purpose. That's what we try to do with this testing. Okay. Now let's explore ways that there are differences between the En-ROADS baseline scenario and the scenarios created by these integrated assessment models for the current policies scenarios. The first here is this input, which is what is the carbon price? The blue line shows that in the En-ROADS has carbon price rising up to $5 a ton, which remains $5 a ton throughout the century. And this shows the results from the other models where uh, two of them show carbon price increasing throughout the century, whereas GCAM is, remains at zero and have their policy inputs coming through other means in the carbon price. Another one is where we're looking at Lulu CF, land use, land use change in forestry emissions. These show the results of how many gigatons CO2 per year from the three other models, all of them having some emissions, all falling generally over the century. And now the results from En-ROADS are rising and then rising to be higher um, at the end of the century. So our emissions are a little bit higher. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in additional emissions from additional to land use and land use change. And then these are gonna come from bioenergy. And when we add in emissions, that is when we harvest trees for bioenergy and then burn them, and then you have soil release and also rotting um, of parts of the trees, uh, you get additional emissions. You also have changes to sequestration. When we add in those net emissions, then it's much higher. This is one of the reasons that we hypothesize that the baseline for En-ROADS is higher than the others. In fact, we tested it by removing uh, bioenergy emissions from our baseline to see how much closer we get to the others. The, we think that that's going to help because we understand that some of the integrated assessment models assume that bioenergy emissions, by definition, are what we call uh, carbon neutral that as much as carbon goes into the atmosphere also gets retained into soils and into biomass. All right, so when we remove those bioenergy emissions, then we get a little bit closer. One test of, it, uh, of the scenarios. All right, I'm gonna show another result for fluorinated gases, SF6, HFCs, these others, uh, the integrated assessment model scenarios show a reduction, perhaps from some of the global policy that's out there to reduce F gases. Uh, we're not assuming that, that, that those policies reduce emissions and we have them growing. You can reduce those emissions in the simulator if you want to replicate something closer to these scenarios. Some other ways that we differ, one of the other simulations or other scenarios has coal with carbon capture and storage, or CCS, growing in exajoules up to above 20 by the end of the century. Similarly, with natural gas, carbon capture and storage, a little faster growth and, and very high, getting all the way up to 90 uh, exajoules per year. One other model, the message Globium's current policies has afforestation, 
rising up here to about four and a half gigaton CO2 per year of removal. And then here with carbon dioxide removal, we call here non-afforestation CO2 sequestration. Two of the models have a fairly small amount of CO2 being removed every year. Okay, there was my tour of some of the comparisons of En-ROADS baseline and En-ROADS other scenarios against other models that are out there that are so critical to building our confidence in En-ROADS and also just providing an important tool to the world. As you see, there are some strong similarities. There are some differences. And I just wanted to expose a little bit more of the method that we use to build our confidence while benefiting so much from all of the scientific ideas that are out there and insights and results from the world of climate modeling. I hope this was helpful. Go get them.